J boy, where did you go? Are you the J H? Are you the one? Anyways, um, what we're looking at here is another Gauss's law example, which just disappeared off my screen for some insane reason. There it is. Um, this is another Gauss's law example, and we're gonna look at a hollow conductive sphere. So let's take a hollow sphere like this, and say this hollow sphere has a charge positive Q on it. Now remember, for conductors, this charge exists at the surface, okay? So at the surface, there is some positive charge Q that is uniformly distributed around this sphere, okay? What we are asked to do, and what I'd like you to think about is, what is the electric field on the outside of this sphere? Okay, if we're on the outside of the sphere, what is our electric field? So like if we're at here in space, what's the electric field do to this? And this is kind of a weird question because it's like, well, these particles are close. Like we know there's some tiny bit of charge here, like DQ, and it's, you know, it's this far away, but these ones are like also far away, but we gotta go like through the thing and like how's that gonna work? Okay, we're overthinking this. Let's just use Gauss's law. What? Well, think about it. I have some shape. It's a sphere. I can build a Gaussian surface around it. I can just say, look, here is my Gaussian surface. I also pick sphere shape. Why? Well, because now I'm in the same direction all the time. So as this electric field comes off, whooshing, and it goes through my surface, my surface is always going to be in line so my cosine theta term goes away, okay? So let's just set up Gauss's law real quick. Gauss's law, if we recall, the flux is equal to a closed surface integral of an E field dotted with some dA vector, and that's gonna equal the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Well, I'm solving for an E field. Okay, great, so I don't actually need to know what that is, I'm solving for it. I know what my closed surface integral is of dA. Oops, dA vector. I know what that is. I'm just looking at a sphere. What is the area of my sphere? And this is some you know sphere that goes from the center all the way out to some value r. Okay, because that's where you know your electric field is. Maybe if our electric field is out here, we'd be looking you know much further r all the way out. But wherever you're at. So I know this I know this dA here. Um, this is all just gonna give me here, E, the area of a sphere is just four pi r squared, and then the charge enclosed is just, well, Q, it's just big Q here, divided by epsilon naught. This means if I wanted to solve for my electric field, I can just say that my electric field equals Q over four pi epsilon naught r squared, which, this and the denominator together, isn't this really just kq over r squared? Isn't this just the equation of a point charge? Yes, it absolutely is. Spheres, when you are outside of them, or rather conducting spheres, uh, or rather just spheres, spheres that have charge on them, when you are outside of them, they look like point charges. That's all they look like. Okay, um, and you know, I, if you were in my class, I told us about this uh, all the way back when we studied electrostatics and you've been watching the Coach Botzer videos on YouTube, um, you know, we point this out that, hey, if you're outside of a conducting sphere um, or just any sphere in general, it'll look like a point charge, assuming that it's charged. Um, why? Well, I didn't tell you then, but now we know this is Gauss's law. This just makes it look like a point charge, which is kind of cool. Um, it also makes sense where, you know, as you get further and further and further away, um, you know, that the sphere you see does kind of like narrow down to a point so we see it even further. So yeah, we just get a point charge out of this, which is really, really awesome. Now, that's kind of a follow-up question. This is the case whenever our value of R here, when we are outside the actual radius of the sphere, because you know, this sphere has some radius here, big R. But what happens if we go inside of the sphere? What happens when our uh, surface is less than the actual hollow sphere. What happens when we're on the inside? Well, if we're on the inside, 
somewhere, it's the same equation. We still say that our closed surface integral of E dot dA equals the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, how much charge are you enclosing here? What is enclosed inside of this region? Nothing. Nothing. And because of that, if we, if we come along over then, and we take a look at this, what we're going to have is e times, I don't even care about the 4 pi r squared, it's going to equal 0. Which, sure, there's something here, but that means our electric field will equal 0. And that's why, once again, we see, um, and we stated we can prove this in a number of ways, uh, if we're inside of a conductor, since all the charges are out here on the edges, when we build our Gaussian surface on the inside, this Gaussian sphere, I don't have any charges uh, inside of it. And since there's no charges inside of it, I can't get this flux, and my electric field will be zero. I could still have a voltage, but the E field, which we're showing here, is zero. So kind of a neat thing there um, that we once again proved. We've kind of known this idea from whenever we just talked about electrostatics and some of our shapes. But now that we have Gauss's law, we can once again prove it definitively with mathematics. So this is how we can start thinking about spheres um, for Gauss's law. Just a basic sphere with some charge on it. Um, naturally on the AP test, they'll throw a little curveball in here. Uh, so we've done a bunch of AP uh, practice problems and solutions to all those free responses are up on the Coach Botzer page if you want to check them out. But for right now, this basic idea of a Gauss's law for a sphere is finished. In some future episodes, we'll start looking at solid spheres, which are insulators. Ooh, a little different. Um, we'll also start looking at uh, some other shapes, like what happens if you have a wire? What happens if you have a plane of charge? But until next time, um, when we come back to those, adios, and you all take it easy.